When it comes to figuring out your business idea, do you still find yourself saying, I still don't know what my thing is yet? Well, instead of this wild goose chase for an elusive idea, what if I told you that your best business concept already lies within you? hidden in your skills, your experiences, and even your passions. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing four ways that my own clients have discovered their meaningful business idea. And you're going to want to listen in because maybe one of these concepts will actually be the key to unlocking your own unique business idea. Stay tuned. As a work reinvention coach and business strategist, I have helped so many people in the last decade to uncover what their meaningful business idea is and launch their dream business into the world. But it always starts at the sticky point that everyone has trouble with, which is what kind of business should I start? Or what should I do with my life? Which is also an existential question and one that's not easy to answer. So in my experience, I always believe that the best meaningful business ideas that is right for right now, not something that's on your tombstone or what could be the forever thing, you know, that's what keeps people trumped in picking an idea and going with it because they're looking for perfection. But the best business ideas to start and let that idea evolve as you evolve as a human, which is to start with what you know, starting with all the assets, resources, experiences, skill sets that already exist within you so that you can repurpose those expertise, repurpose those gifts, reinvent that work and gift that to the marketplace right now instead of waiting for the best thing that ever hits you. You can make it the best thing by starting with something you're familiar with. So one of the key things I find is a great practice or exercise to start with is taking that trip down memory lane and identifying some of the big milestones in your life. Looking at your story of what were some of the biggest transformations, shifts, changes that made a difference in your life and start to look at your personal life, start to look at your professional experiences and kind of even on a sticky note wall, you know, grab a bunch of sticky notes and do a timeline on the wall, right? Of all the key moments that have happened in your life that you might find passionate to share in terms of what you did to achieve those milestones or things that happen within yourself personally to transform into someone better, someone that you're, you know, that you're more proud to become in the world, something that changed everything in your relationships, the way you work with people or a problem you learn how to solve for yourself. So with my business at Screw the Cubicle, this is exactly how it was born. It was born from a pain that I experienced transitioning from my nine to five, trying to figure it out of what is the right business to start, not being able to find the right people, you know, to help me with this. And as I went through my own transition and figured out the tools, solutions and approach, it changed my perspective about what could be possible and why that wasn't being offered out there. So I decided to make that offering, right? So things that you have overcome, right? Personal pain that you have managed to bypass and, you know, achieve a better way to reach a goal, whatever that might look like for you, may be one of the best things that you could be developing a business around, right? A great example of this is also my client, Tully Rose, who is a toxic relationship coach uh, there's a podcast called Leaving Toxic. I was just a guest on it just last week. Um, her website is tullyrose.com. Um, if you read her bio, her business idea of being a coach for people that are in narcissistic relationships, in toxic relationships, and coming back to themselves again, that wasn't just an idea that plopped on her lap. It was something that she had to go through personally that gave her a lot of pain, but coming out of that situation gave her the tools, gave her the superpowers to support someone just like her a little bit behind her on the pathway, right? And that is all you really need to be as an expert, right? Is you just have to be one step ahead of somebody else, right? And if you can do that in a particular problem that you're passionate to talk about and share because it meant something for you to go through that pain, go through that circumstance, that might be an interesting business idea for you to start as well. The second approach is about gaps in an industry that you're most familiar with. Actually, one of my first businesses before I started Screw the Cubicle was actually related to my old industry. You know, I started a boutique agency serving the international education industry 
because I was in there for many years. I've been in a top position. I kind of knew what wasn't working <laughs> in that industry. To be honest, is what frustrated me, what created that irritation whenever I went to work and go, oh God, that could have been done so much better. But because I didn't have autonomy to make big changes at the role I was playing in my old corporation, I decided that, well, if I started my own consulting agency, I could solve that problem differently. I could start to pitch a different way of doing things where this old school dinosaur industry that does things kind of backwards and in the 50s, you know, could kind of modernize their approach in doing things better. And that's what I brought to the table with my experience in my old corporate job. So if you are currently in an industry that you've had a lot of experience in, you know, I work with a lot of mid-career professionals that are like, they've climbed that corporate ladder. They have done it all in that industry. Well, that gives you a lot of power to, of knowledge, right? To know what is not working in my industry. If I was in charge of developing a new solution, of connecting better people together, right? Whatever it might be to improve something in your industry, that might be an interesting business idea to explore. Now, one of my clients, Julie Scali, which was um, a deputy principal in a school, she's been a teacher for many years, saw a gap in the education industry as well, all right? She was looking at some of her students that had learning disabilities and, you know, things that weren't, uh, students that couldn't learn properly with the sort of traditional way of how teachers were teaching every single day. She decided to change the game, right, by starting a company called Literacy Impact. And you can go find that at literacyimpact.com. And now she really supports through workshops, trainings, coaching, um, you know, principals, administrators, school teachers with developing a literacy, literacy program. That's a bit of a tongue twister, right? Um, to ensure that no student is left behind, that every student gets a chance to learn differently and to look at di the diversity of learning that's so necessary for education these days so that people don't feel like, you know, they, they, they are stupid, right? Just because they can't learn it exactly the way the old textbooks used to tell teachers how to teach that topic. So it's such an impactful piece of work, right? That came from her observation of her marketplace, of her industry. And maybe you've had some observations as well about what doesn't work in your industry, what you would love to improve and fill that gap with a business idea. And guess what? The great thing about this is that you're already so familiar with this industry. You've likely built networks, you've likely built clients and relationships and an ecosystem, you know, of partnerships perhaps even, right? But you have your finger on the pulse already, you know, so to speak, in that industry. So that opportunity to start that business within the industry you're familiar with gives you a bunch of assets to, you know, have you already have these contacts to do bigger things with your business, which I think is an excellent way to get started. The third way of discovering a meaningful business idea is to look at familiar groups of people. Okay, so familiar is obviously one of the keywords here, right? The last one was familiar industries that have a gap in the marketplace. And now it's about a familiar group of people you might feel drawn to help. And these might be not professionally related for you right now. Maybe you belong to a group of uh, people in your community at the moment, in your volunteer projects, in Facebook groups, um, maybe in your friendship groups as well, that you're like, wow, these people are my people. Uh, and I can also observe that when I'm talking to these people, when I'm witnessing what they're going through in their lives, I find myself thinking, huh, I could probably help with that. Or it might be the thing that you keep getting called about, you know, like people have you on speed dial <laughs> about certain topics. You know, maybe you've learned how to do something as a parent that worked really well for you. So your friends keep calling you, you're giving out free advice all the time. And that might be a little prompter for you that these might be the people that I might be drawn to serve, that I wanna do more for because they're like me. They started where I started too, and I can really support them to do something amazing. So one of the examples for this is my client, Lee Hawkseth. Uh, which has a company called The Behavior Labs. So you can go to thebehaviorlabs.com the to go find out more about what she does. Um, but she, you know, has been in an industry that dealt with health programs for organizations, 
Um, she's also a health coach herself. She's been certified to be a health coach. She's also really passionate about, passionate about behavior design principles that she felt weren't infused into how we did health coaching in the industry and how that could really change people to um, develop more permanent habit building principles that they can take on for life so that they don't keep falling off the wagon when it comes to their health goals. So Lee knew health coaches, right? Lee knew people that were passionate about helping people solve their health issues because she's a coach herself. She's taken the courses. She's a part of this community. But one of the things that she observed that was missing in how they were designing their offers, how they were facilitating their coaching programs, were missing this big component she learned from this other course, right? That was she was certified in, which is behavior design. So this beautiful merging of passions, right? Behavior design principles and health coaching, right? That became Lee's sweet, sweet spot for meaningful work, right? To combine this amazing superpower of understanding health coaches, knowing how they think and what they want, because she's also a health coach herself, but then teaching them a concept to enhance their coaching practice in a more powerful way. So sometimes looking at groups of people, okay, that you have, you already belong to in the, the ecosystem, you know, certifications, um, you know, maybe you're part of um, a local community that specializes in something. Uh, maybe you keep sort of belonging to particular groups on LinkedIn or Facebook that is about a certain topic, right? Um, minimalism, right? Lifestyle design, whatever's the topic. Could there be a gap there, a problem to solve for those people that you have seen and observed that maybe you have the skill sets to solve it? That could also be an idea to plant in your head today. And finally, a, another approach to look at what's my meaningful business idea is maybe you have a call towards a direction to impact change in a bigger sort of global mission in the world that you're like, ah, oh, I really want to be part of the ripple effect for that mission, right? Or it could also be that something happened to you in your personal life that you're like, that shouldn't happen to anyone else. That is not okay, right? Not on my watch should that be happening. That sometimes that, you know, we're emotional beings. So if you think about your day-to-day, -day, there's been moments in your life when you see something on the news, when you witness something happening online, you're like, that's not okay. I want to change that. Or you wish something better could work out for people. You know, a bit about my mission as well. I, I believe that people should have more freedom. I believe there are more people that are more capable of being independent and um, doing work they love so that they keep, can become better contributors in their community. I want to be a part of that change, right? By my little corner of the world of how I solve that problem, right? So perhaps there is a cause, right? A mission that you want to be a part of that's been looming in your mind, right? That you want, want to um, design a business around, right? That could give you meaning, that proudness you want to feel, that impact you want to feel, right? When it comes to your work direction. Um, and that might be a really great place to start to ask yourself those questions. Um, a great example of this is one of my clients, Krista Kirchen. Um, she has a company called LexMedica.com, right? And part of her genius zone, which is so amazing, uh, is that she's that sort of like, she calls herself kind of like the Tinder matchmaker, you know, between, um, you know, lawyers and physical or, or physicians and, and doctors, right? And she deals with malpractice cases because she's actually been in the medical world and been in the law world, right? And she sort of saw the, uh, the cases that came across her desk in the past, right? Um, that families that were in these, you know, um, accident cases, malpractice cases, like there's so much that changes in their life if they don't get a good verdict of getting paid out for um, all the medical expenses that they have to spend money on. And if she didn't find them the right physician that could vouch for their injury, uh, that she didn't connect that lawyer that was trying to win that case for their clients to the right doctors and, you know, practitioners that could really say, special, you know, were specialists in certain areas of that injury so they could be in court to vouch for this thing that this judge would never have known, right, could be a thing. These people wouldn't be able to pay their debts off. They wouldn't be able to heal from those injuries, right? And all these things that have happened to them medically. 
So she felt this call, right, to like solve that problem because she's got the know-how, she's got the connections, she's got the superpower in both industries to bring a meaningful chain into how these cases can be won, how these people can be compensated fairly, right? What a great concept. And so that could also be perhaps your focus, right? Something you're called to do, something that you see going on that you're like, not on my watch, I want to fix that. And you could utilize your existing skills right now to solve that problem meaningfully. Okay, so I walked you through those four ways, gave you examples. Go and check out all these websites I mentioned just to get that inspiration of that. There are people doing great work literally from everything that already exists within them. So what kind of ideas did it prompt for you today? You know, what were one of the ways that you want to try that I've talked about today to develop your business idea? What kind of gave you a spark of inspiration when you watched this video today? Well, I want to hear from you. So comment below the video. Let me know your biggest takeaway from this video. Let me know an idea that's sparking a little bit of inspiration and curiosity for you today that you may want to pursue as your meaningful business direction. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you in my next video. And by the way, if you want to learn more about what's your ideal business to start, a great place to start is my free quiz, which is what's my ideal business to start based on my personality type. You can find it in the link in the cards or go to screwthecubicle.com forward slash quiz and you'll be able to take a free quiz that will help you determine a model of work that's best suited for your strengths and your personality type. The second way to do more with me is to go and take my free training um, called The Four Keys to Launch a Business You Love. And you can find that on my website as well, screwthecubicle.com forward slash workshop. I'm going to walk you through a 50 minute workshop on the main essential pieces to help develop a business that's going to feel easeful to run and all the foundational pieces that people are missing to launch a business that's going to make your offers feel good. That's going to make sure you're targeting the right person that you want to help and to be able to make marketing your business a lot less sleazy and a lot more human. So I hope that you join me in that workshop because we're going to cover so much to help you go from ideation or fuzzy idea to actually launching a business that you love. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.